We get. Why did 2010s look like this? Look like that. Share the extra mint. Yes, share extra mint. I'll eat my peppermint right now in a few minutes after this video. Flash games, MLG, Trollface, and swag. The internet was a very different place in the 2010s. Memes yep. used to look like this, and YouTube was filled with content you couldn't make today. Regardless of whether you fell in love with Vaporwave, or spent way too long watching shooting star memes, you might be wondering where all of this went, and what it even was. So, as things get stranger and stranger, we'll dig into the 2010s to try and find out- You know the uh, little memes I had with the shoes, bro, with the Jordans, bro? It said Oreo 5s, he had five Oreo 5 next to some Oreos, or something Why? like that, in the, uh, 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 in the grocery store. Stuff like that. Maybe a chicken wings? It's 2024 and everything has a name, including this visual style. I ain't gonna lie to you, I saw Flight reacted. I'm like, oh, I wanna react to this too. Like, I ain't watched Flight reaction, but I saw the video pop up on my feed and he reacted to it. So I'm like, I wanna react to this too. Hence, known as Internet Awesome Source, it was most prevalent from yeah, 2008 awesome, to 2016. There's a suspicious correlation between the popularity of the word epic. I know and Amazing Crew. Like I mean, not Amazing, the Incredible Crew. These. I know them. Elements were rainbows, they used to come on Cartoon cats, Network. Dinosaurs, unicorns, and lasers people were obsessed with lasers. Outside of memes and gifs, this aesthetic could be seen all over the internet. The intro of Uncle Grandpa is a good example. Uncle Grandpa! I remember that show on Cartoon Network! They had the pizza dude, party pizza dude. He's my favorite. ...him riding a tiger propelled by rainbows. It was also used in games with Robot Unicorn Attack from 2010, exemplifying the style. Other instances can be found in PewDiePie's Tuba Simulator, in mini games like Puggle and Techno Kitten Adventure. If you were browsing YouTube in 2011, you might have even seen Let Internet On the troll face. Posted over 40 <laughs> memes in one song. How come we don't see it anymore? Yarn cats and rainbow puke, there isn't much more you could ask for. But anyway, why was this kind of humor and style so popular? While a lot of these were ironic, rainbows and unicorns formed the comedic basis of too many memes to count. Nyan Cat was close to the top of the most viewed videos in 2011, making it a cultural phenomenon. This, and the popularity of things like shooting stars, influenced the fascination with combining explosions and lasers to make the most epic image possible. To truly appreciate this, you've got to understand that at the time, random equaled funny. Coupling a mythical, peaceful creature like a unicorn now they call it cringe. and chaos didn't only look cool, it was unexpected and therefore humorous. This and the popularity of My Little Pony are big reasons videos like pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows have tens of millions of views. If we look at some other trends from around 2011, this begins to make a bit more sense. With social media on the rise, it was easier to make and share clips to a wider range of people. The idea of trolling was also gaining traction, meaning that humor often leaned into the absurd and confusing. Naturally, Awesome Source perfectly slots into this landscape with its use of random combinations and niche internet memes. You the video's over? Oh. Watch the ads disappear you sponsored by Pi? I don't use Pi. I know you use Pi, Extra Mint. MLG. If you never had XX underscore as part of your username, you Aye. were doing something wrong. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, oh, that's right. XX underscore. Yeah, that's right. Brain rot of today pales in comparison to the content juggernaut that was MLG. You might have watched MLG Peppa Pig, Game of Thrones, or any number of trickshot I've episodes. seen the videos on my time. I never watched them. If it was really bad, maybe you even got caught downloading green screen packs and piecing together your own. Some of the more iconic visuals were Snoop Dogg, Random Quick Scopes, Cool Ranch Doritos, and COD Hit Markers. Pyro Cynical was a major perpetrator, being the man behind MLG Teletubbies and furry inflation art. I find it crazy to look back and see the views on some of these videos. Many are well above 10 million, which speaks to the absolute chokehold they had on the internet. Another recurring detail was Illuminati Confirmed, which would often involve a text-to-speech voice linking random things to the all-seeing eye. With that and enough explosions and air horns, you could turn any no-scope into a work of art. Outside of the visuals, they featured numerous sound effects hey, and songs that are probably imprinted deep within your temporal lobe. 
If you weren't humming it already, My Hope Will Never Die or Holding On, hopefully they have the like the one that's on before the video. With the X Files theme also playing a major role. The horrific audio of successful trick shot reactions was I call of Duty. Too. That's right. If you're a real one, I remember that profile picture. The uh, uh, Xbox 360 profile picture with the panda. He had the little uh, dude with the uh, 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 the hat on, blowing bubble gum. Who are those? What else? What else? You got the little uh, uh, skull symbol, red skull symbol with the little uh, uh, settings logo around it. Oh, these are the times, man. These were the times. Everyone came money hungry and clout hungry. Comment with the rest of this phrase. You know? You know? These kinds of edits can be traced back to as early as 2000. Most addicted drug. Became addictive. Clout. Specifically, a World of Warcraft video made by Jamal. With the green screen overlay of a quick scope, it provides the first Ooh, example of an MLG style montage. The reason such videos rose to prominence is in the name Major League Gaming. Professional esports. Oh, that's what MLG stands for. Reels that went on to inspire fans to begin making their own. With many of these simply being replays recorded by an iPhone, yep. they were. He used to tell you it was online, yep. Usually much worse in quality and far more amusing. As the internet did its thing, these became more and more deranged, and eventually morphed into the irony-laden masterpieces that plagued the 2010s. Unlike the memes of today, MLG lasted a few years before losing traction, disappearing, for the most part, in 2016. Bro, tell me get off my screen! Even though the last decade was only a few years ago, things have changed a lot online. Here on YouTube, this is especially apparent. A perfect case study for yeah. is the rise and fall of Let's Plays. Let's Play is yep. the reason many of your favorite YouTubers are your favorite YouTubers. Broadly, this style of video involved commentary over clips of a video game that focused on the player's experience of it rather yep. than a guide or a walkthrough. I heard now, you now yes plays in uh, 2024, you gotta do the whole thing in one video. You gotta beat the whole game in one video, basically, or on one stream. Then you can upload that to YouTube. It'll be like six hours long or something like that. The general format is credited to Michael Sawyer, or Slow Beef. See? Level 1. See, you can't do it no more on YouTube. I heard that's not popular. You gotta beat the whole game. You gotta beat the whole game of Immortal. Seven playthrough of The Immortal is widely considered to be the first modern Let's Play. As YouTube began to take off, this style of video did as well. It's Fred! People like PewDiePie would emerge Bro, Fred, that was a... to take off. Bro, where's Fred at? This style of I remember him from iCarly. He was on iCarly one time. Video did as well. People like PewDiePie would emerge with wildly successful series like his horror playthroughs. The draw here wasn't just the game, it was his reactions and experience of it. By naming enemies and objects like Stefano, he built up his own lore inside these videos that kept people coming back regardless of the game he was playing. Markiplier found similar success with his Five Nights at Freddy's Let's Plays, the first of which was uploaded in August of 2014 and currently sits at over 100 million views. Today, however, Let's Plays are seemingly a thing of the past, yeah. at least as a method of blowing up. Arguably, this is mostly due to the oversaturation of gaming content on the site. Making a video title yeah, is oversaturated now. Episode three isn't as likely to take off anymore in a sea of very similar videos. If you want, uh, 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 if you want, let's, you're gonna have to. Episode three isn't as likely to take yeah, off yeah, yeah, see yeah, very agree. similar videos. The current landscape does yeah, more creative. favor challenge videos with an interesting premise, like the Fallout series by It's Jabo. Another reason Let's Plays have disappeared is that they haven't. They've just moved. Instead of watching a YouTube video, much of the audience for Let's Plays has shifted over to streaming. Yeah. Here they can tune in whenever they want and watch a content creator they like nah. play the game for much longer periods of time. Yeah. Moving on. That's why. That's why. That's why you gotta do, beat the whole game in one sitting. That's why, be, that's why it's more popular. That's why, at least that's what I heard. You can't do level one to level two. Y'all beat the whole game in one setting. If you ever watched the Cake Trilogy by Filthy Frank, Idubs, and Max Mofo, you likely remember when shock humor reigned supreme. By around 2016, this had come to a peak, with gaming content becoming slightly less popular. In yeah, two out of 16. That's right, everyone's on pranks. Pranks and couple channels. With and right now, reality TV shows. That was 2016, 2017. PewDiePie refers to this as the Filthy Frank era. A time when even he adapted to the change by making edgier content with a raspier voice. Hey guys, <laughs> can I take your boyfriend for a ride? Can if you want. He's in. This was partially the byproduct of ambiguity surrounding YouTube's content policies. There wasn't as clear of a line between unacceptable and acceptable practices. People were maintaining high viewerships and growing exponentially while saying and doing things that would be pulled from the site today. For example, the Cake Trilogy was retroactively removed following a more recent reaction from PewDiePie. 
This likely reminded YouTube that they still existed and didn't align with the updated content guidelines. In 2017, oh, just snatch that piece away from you. Come on, that wasn't snatch it away I from me. I remember at the time this felt like a huge deal, with many large channels being legitimately concerned about their income. The term describes a mass withdrawal of advertisers from YouTube following several large scale controversies. Many were no longer comfortable showing ads on content that wasn't family friendly, resulting in some channels receiving ads while others didn't. For creators like Filthy Frank, this made it all but impossible to make money from their videos. This meant that there was less incentive to make edgy, humorous content, and it quickly declined in popularity. Some of these YouTubers adapted and continue to thrive on YouTube today. Others, like He's on hot ones. haven't been seen since 2017. I have, however, found an artist called Joji who sounds strangely similar to Pink Guy. I need to find the best way to learn math and science. Talking about brilliant? I know he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Whoa. I know he's brilliant. Astromet. It's hard to categorize something as unpredictable as memes, let alone analyze their use. Was that on, uh, 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 that dude that was in Nick Cannon, I mean, not Nick Cannon, uh, 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 he was on Nickelodeon with the Game Shakers. Yeah, I know, remember that show Game Shakers with Nickelodeon? The, on uh, two, uh, smart girls, then the dumb boy, then, uh, 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 the... The uh, artist it's hard to and the other artist. Something as unpredictable as memes. Cal, that's the name. Cal, that's right. They used through an entire decade. And write to me. We're gonna do it anyway. Thanks to Reddit users like Paper Cup, there's been many attempts to organize them into specific eras. Today, we'll be focusing on three that span the. I remember this. Nasty Alalalager and surreal. Starting with the Rage era. Who's raging? Who was raging back in 2009? The Dank era. Surreal. Rage, this term is derived from Rage Comics, which began in 2008 on sites like 4chan. These would typically be short, with four panels based around humorous or irritating real life experiences. The common thread was a collection of so called Rage Comics. Remember, like Andrew. You'll recognize Coldface, Rage Guy, Why You Know Guy, and Serial Guy. This began Ooh, more chill. widespread with the inception of R forward slash in 2009. Funnily enough, this is still active, although not nearly as prolific. Top and bottom text memes were pretty big at this time as yep. well. Yep, 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 I remember top and bottom text, yep. Slapped on top of images like Bad Luck Brian, Overly Attached Girlfriend, and Boromir. These all followed simple formulas that anyone could relate to and make themselves. All it required was an internet connection, the impact font, and a dream. As 2013 rolled around, we can identify a shift into the dank meme era. Here, memes became considerably more abstract and less centered around understandable and repetitive tropes like these. This period encapsulates the peak of MLG, the use of these glasses, and Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Still, these were far from the most iconic. 9 plus 10, Harambe, Vape Nation. Yeah, what's 9 plus 10? We are number one and... I remember them, hold on, they look familiar. I'm a Randy Orton kind of lookalike. I forgot their names. Oh yeah, the uh, yep, the Sonic. What's it called? The uh, 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 Sonic something. Sonic. The uh, what's it called? Racist Mario, something like that. Or something like that. Crazy Mario. Raka Raka. Y'all remember Raka Raka? Ronald McDonald. And do you know the way? All emerged in a similar time frame. Instagram meme accounts started to become huge, all as part of a multi-platform ecosystem that produced, propelled, and modified memes throughout their life cycle. A big reason some of these were so bizarre and nonsensical was that Gen Z was growing up and becoming increasingly active on social media. By using themes and references that only they could understand, they distanced themselves from older generations and formats. This is also why some of them were quite edgy, with all of it playing a role in forming their own distinct online identity. You can see this reflected in the creators who were popular among the demographic. As I mentioned before, if you weren't watching Let's Plays, you might have tuned into Max Mofo, iDubs, or Filthy Frank. Who had heard of iDubs, but I never heard of other people. Some of the most shared memes and phrases. A perfect example of this is the green screen of It's Time to Stop, which appeared in hundreds of edits on multiple platforms. Next up is the Surreal Era, that kicked off in the late 2010s. This Are you Uganda? You not Uganda Knuckles? You Uganda Knuckles? Memes, Crab Rave, and... Of course, the release of Fortnite. To be honest, things started to take a turn for the worse here. Deep fried memes were made by running an image through a filter over and over until it became warped and barely legible. This would be combined with an equally ridiculous King DDD? text, if any at all. Waluigi. The real memes, on the other hand, often featured this guy. He was associated with things like the layers of irony and the term angry, popping up everywhere online. 
Mr. Orange or Orang is another example. I never saw this before. I know that the, the I know the annoying orange. I know this orange. With its name, I know orange had legs and hands. Similar premise to much older memes. To be random and confusing was to be funny. Not many of these made sense, and it was often that and their absurdity that made them entertaining. Flash games. Happy Wheels, Bloons Tower Defense, and the Impossible Quiz have never, never played that in common. I never played those games. games. I think I played Happy Wheels one time, or two times, or three times, or four times. In the early 2000s, Something like that. I considered the golden age for this kind of gaming. Most of my exposure to these titles was on Cool Maths games. Yeah. I spent hours cool Math and Y8. Y'all remember the OGs? Remember Y8, man? Y'all remember Y8? The OGs, Y8. Water Girl. Used to get back. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't play this. Don't play this, bruh. This man turned you This man, Papa, bro, is evil. Don't play him. Don't play this game. You're gonna work with Papa forever. I distinctly yeah. remember spamming the sauce until I had a stack about three feet tall, selling it for zero dollars, and then quitting the game. Yeah, yeah. I actually took that seriously. I only took the game seriously. I ain't played the um burger one. I ain't like the burger one. I like the um pizza one, the freezer one, and the waffle one. He had a waffle one. Man, was a big bag. You know, the whole bunch of big bags in that universe right there, bro. Still I had a stack about three feet. He's made, he has made the most of it, so I can't be mad, but I am. Because so he just finessed everyone. Papa just finessed everyone. But Y8, cool math games, and what else? One more thing. I forgot. Dang, I forgot. But cool eight, cool math games and Y8. What do you know about Y8? And then quitting the game. Turning back time even further, Flash first released in 1996. People eventually figured out that it was possible to make games on it, with many of them starting to pop up in the early 2000s. The website Newgrounds emerged at a similar time, Newgrounds. and soon became a massive platform for user-generated Flash games. This website made it possible for almost anyone to produce, share, and play others' work online, with the only requirement being a clickable link. Of course, these games weren't limited to Newgrounds, as they could be embedded and accessed through any other website like Cool Maths games. This meant that if your game wasn't received well in one place, there was always a chance it could take- Yeah, you go to a different- Yep. Yeah. In another. Facts, As facts, a, facts. I did that with Y8. Games on Y8 wasn't working, I was going to Cool Math. As a result, it's facts. no surprise that some of these games became massive. Happy Wheels was, and still is, huge. YouTubers like PewDiePie and Markiplier did Let's Plays that received millions of views, with Jacksepticeye uploading as recently as April 2024. By now, you've likely heard that Flash is no longer a thing, but you might be surprised to learn that the end of Flash games was heralded by Steve Jobs way back in 2010. In his famous Thoughts on Flash letter, he criticized Adobe for Flash's security issues, poor performance, and the fact that it was a closed system. This meant that Apple would have less control over the software and any bug fixes, being one of the main reasons they refused to support it on iOS. As the years passed and things like HTML5 rose to prominence and offered more security, Flash sped towards the inevitable. Soon enough, Adobe announced its end of life in 2017 and Flash took its last breath in 2020. Thankfully, that's the 2020. Preserved, and it's entirely possible to still play them. This isn't to say, however, that thousands weren't lost to time. Uh, Samsung Galaxy? Or Samsung? You had a Samsung? Extra mint. Vaporwave, what's that? If you recognize this image, you most likely remember Vaporwave. This picture is that the Sailor Moon playing in the background? An album made by the artist I never Victor. saw it, but I know what it is. Most iconic song I never saw it, though. was Lisa Frank 420. This was used everywhere, in memes, edits, and often as part of YouTube outros. Of course, Vaporwave was much more than just a subgenre of music. It was also a distinct and fascinating aesthetic that began on the internet. Common features included retro 3D graphics, pink and purple pastels, <laughs> dolphins, and foliage. After its inception in the early years of the decade, Vaporwave began to rapidly spread over numerous platforms. Whether you found it on commentary channels or songs on Bandcamp, it quickly became undeniably huge, peaking at around 2015. There was even an entire game called Mall Quest made in this style. Copies of this can still yeah, be- Yeah, Pop Chocolate, Pop, 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 Pop at. Pop Chocolate. That's how you said Pop, something like that. Pop Chocolate, Pop Chocolate. Bro, that game was popular. Found online. That game was popping, bro. Everyone always talked about it. Every time you go to the computer, they want to play Pop, Pop, Pop Chocolate. Chocolate. It was described as a procedure. And uh, Club Penguin. <laughs> Y'all remember Club Penguin? You have to pay for that. I wasn't paying for it. I never beat none of those games. Generated shopping sim. And it I ain't know how to play Pop Chocolate either. It's pretty cool. 
Returning to design, you might notice that. For I ain't know how to play it either, man. That games, game was too complex, too advanced for me. You these RPG games, yeah, they're too complex for me. Place. That's because most of the imagery you're seeing here was heavily inspired by the 80s and 90s. This transcended architecture, with one of the most influential what artifacts is it? being a game. An Echo the Dolphin, for the Sega Genesis, informed music and aesthetics alike, largely responsible for the heavy use of dolphins in design. Looking at Floral Shop, one of the songs is even named after this title. If you were big on Vaporwave in the 2010s, there's a good chance you recall some of its numerous subgenres. I've mentioned this yeah, before, but Pac one of my for dolphins. Mall soft. Being quite liminal, this would pair shops and plazas with subtle edits to bring out their colour. Another recognisable style is Synthwave. While sharing similar elements to Vaporwave, it's actually an entirely separate aesthetic. Where it celebrates the neon- That's the uh, background to the Roku TV, bruh! Y'all yeah, ever had a Roku TV you just left it on sleep sleep mode? That's the background. Media from the 80s. Oh, that's where they got it from. Satirical and at times okay. Beautiful reflection of the 80s and 90s. Synthwave is responsible for all of the backgrounds you had that looked like this. Yeah. Endless grids, cityscapes, and cars. I don't remember how many times I put on one of these videos, but it was definitely more than once. Anyway, unlike other aesthetics in this video, Vaporwave and Synthwave are still active in smaller online communities. While they are far from their previous position in the mainstream, you can still find new releases if you know where to look. We got a barbershop simulator. <laughs> I'm playing a barbershop simulator. This position in the mainstream. I heard they got like a farm simulator too. Now y'all play that game? Y'all doing chores in a video game? You can still find new releases if you know where to look. A job simulator, bro. Because <laughs> you don't have a job. You can play, you can have a job in a video game. You can wipe the windows. Imagine playing a video game and cleaning the windows. What, what you doing? You can do it in real life. You either have it or you don't. But if you're subscribed, you definitely do. Swag, in this context, described a style of fashion that was very popular yeah, Joe in the early 2010s. While the word itself had been around for years, Bro, John before, Mazzula, what you doing? Like you're a jerk by the new boys jump started this new manifestation, which continued for a couple years in the form of music and clothing. To be swagged out involved. Oh yeah, and yeah, I remember that. Yep, Obey. Yes, Diamond. What else? What else? What else? Obey Diamond. What else? I still got an Obey hoodie. Uh. Ed Hardy, I guess. The brim intact to And then they came back. True religion, they came back. Spent on clothes and more hats, and your front and back labeled with Obey draped in knickknacks. Armani Exchange. These caps were often brought down to cover your eyes in photos, which would then be put through the first filter available on Instagram. The, the Bulls hat, yep. The Bulls People gear. don't really use these anymore. Yeah, he popped D Rose jersey, bro. Were they popular back then? The Scroll good old days. The good old days. Found far enough through anyone's account without like. Oh, an OG Instagram logo. Good old days. Oh, good old days. The world of yellow, grainy filters and vignettes. Shutter shades were also pretty big at the Silly time. Silly bands was in style. Oh, man. Frequently wearing them. Yep, the shades, anyway, black eyed peas. Anyway, along by artists like Lil B, who posted the song I Am Swag <laughs> in 2012. The term, then, was rapidly becoming widespread, in tandem with the production of too many ridiculous caps to count. This entire trend produced some of the most bizarre and iconic fits of the 21st century. Zendaya had some absolutely diabolical drips. She's wearing, uh, she's wearing bazites! Of the 21st century. Zendaya I always liked bazites, but I never got a pair. I got the Son of Mars. That's what I got back in the 2000s. Had some absolutely diabolical drip, and Justin Bieber was straight up malicious. Halfway through the <laughs> decade, swag started Ultimate to slow swag. down, and massive obey caps became less and less desirable. The word itself. With the uh, bucket hats, yep, got the bucket hat right here. The bucket hats. Evolved to become more ironic, and was largely replaced by words like drip among younger generations. Yep, it's called drip now. By 2013, the use of what is now known as Frutiger Aero had largely vanished. For a time after its decline, a similar aesthetic became more popular in corporate design. This is referred to as Frutiger Metro. You might have seen it on your Xbox 360, no. CDs, or textbooks. No. At the time, this style marked the beginning of more flat and minimalist approaches to UI. After all, it gets its name from the Metro design language created by Microsoft. This emphasized simple geometric patterns and shapes, absent of the glossy 3D look of the past. Windows 8 is a prime example of this, with its colorful selection of tiles and icons. I this remember that. is also known as Flat Frutiger Aero, as it shares a lot of the same... Yeah, I remember this. This is on my Xbox 360, yeah. Yeah. When yeah. looking at these designs, you'll notice the prevalence of speakers, dancing silhouettes, and swirls of color. It was pretty much mm -hmm. the stock choice for making a product appear more interesting than it actually was. By slapping it on a CD or a poster, you could quickly add some vibrancy and energy. Much 
like Vaporwave, even it can be divided into smaller, equally recognizable categories. For example, Funky Metro, centered around instruments, DJs, and dancing, is a lot different to Grungy Metro, which relates to scene and darker colors. Outside of its classifications, you could spot Fruitiga Metro in a bunch of advertisements. Why is this one for Nickelodeon is an interesting example, showing Jack Black amidst bright splashes of color. Oh, Jack Going Black! I remember Jack Black, he was Kung Fu Panda! He was on iCarly one time too. Did he fight Spencer? Or we can find some of its early in the middle of a hallway, like the ad shown here. You'll notice that, much like Fruitiga Aero, nature still played a big role in these designs. When shown alongside technology, this was likely done to help it appear less intimidating and more accessible. By animating things like plants and dolphins, devices could feel less alien and more familiar. The use of this style today has been overwhelmingly shelved in favour of minimalism, meaning it kind of served as a transitional period between the maximalist aesthetics of the 2000s and the flat designs of today. Looking at other videos we've done on this channel, on the 90s and the 2000s, you can make out clear, long-lasting and distinct aesthetic styles. A lot of these were used by corporations to make technology appear advanced and exciting, hinged on an almost fantastical anticipation for the future. By the 2010s, this future was well underway, and with it, the internet. If you weren't logged in at the start of the decade, you definitely were before the end, and I know this because you're watching this video. The number of people who are online more than doubled from 2010 to 2020, yeah. meaning that people's experiences of the world were increasingly informed by things on the internet. And so the reason and it's because of the, uh, the 2010s looked like that is you. How more people on the internet? Media like YouTube videos, vines, flash games, and memes. Everyone was in when the world was in lockdown. Had more people on the internet, and that's when it. That's where it really blew up to me. Come people's lives. Making videos with a shitty webcam was suddenly profitable, and the creation of content was something anyone could do. So while some of it may be cringe now, all of it played a role in creating what many consider to be the golden age of the internet. That's it. Shout out extra man. Nasty Lala Jeff. 